Okay, this is my uh, my half-witted attempt at a YouTube video. Uh, anybody that knows Harley Davidson knows that you know there's, there's plenty of maintenance that's got to go on with them and things like that. I was hearing a grinding noise in my front tire. I have about 104,000 miles on a uh, 2000 Ultra. Just uh, redid the engine last year, but anyway. Uh, uh, my buddy heard it when he was riding with me. He said, hey, I hear your brakes just like I hear on my buddy's 2007. So I turned everything off and was going down a hill, turned the bike off, and uh, when I uh, depressed the brake handle a little bit, the noise didn't stop. So that leads me to believe it's going to be the, uh, a bearing. Now, I already changed the bearing on the other side on this, uh, but I just wanted to go over a real quick instructional video on how to change the bearings. They're not complicated at all, but there are some special tools that you need. Uh, you need the bearing removal tool that Harley Davidson has got. It's listed in your service manual. And um, you see a lot of people, uh, I've seen some other videos, uh, people beating the uh, uh, the bearings out with, with drifts and, and breaking them and things like that. And that's just not the way to do it. If you're going to do it, you need to get the tools and you need to do it the right way. It makes it so much simpler. And uh, I'll go through the process with this. And... Uh, then I'll move the camera up so you get a better idea. Um, anyway, what I did when I took them off, I just went and had the tires put on. And uh, here's the bearing. This is the bearing that came out of it. It's got about 100. It's got 104,000 miles on it. Uh, it looks like it's good on the other side that I pulled out, like I just told you. Um, I can move it. I don't hear any grinding. Uh, there's no lateral movement to it within the bearing. So, so you know for all practical purposes this bearing's good it's still got a lot of life in it but uh for twenty dollars to replace two bearings uh that's nothing just for nothing else peace of mind you know i've already got the tires and all off of it i'll uh uh set the camera up and do a uh a video on that too just to show you the the correct way to install them and, and what needs to be greased on them when you uh, put them back on and the correct uh torque sequence because your brakes and all bolt on there too and that you know that's a very integral part of the motorcycle Going down the road fast is fun, but stop is necessary. It's like the plane. Uh, owner's manual of plane says takeoffs are optional. Landings are mandatory. You're coming out of the sky. So let me uh, let me get some things here done, and uh, we'll start back up in just a second once I get everything uh, set up. Okay, this is the uh, rem <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this is the removal tool. Uh, this is referred to as the collet and if you look closely on here you'll see that it has a raised edge at the bottom uh, for the front wheel bearings we're using a, a one inch now if you're going to do uh, I think it's uh, previous to the 2001 like I have for the rear bearings but I replaced those a little bit ago uh, that requires a uh, three-quarter bearing uh, because it went to the uh, to the bigger axles so uh, to put this on you merely sit it over there and uh, the reason these are important is because they sit between the Torx bolts that hold your rotor on. So you just set it up in there. And I guess I'll just go over how this works. You tighten the, uh, the outer bolt and the sleeve uh, slides up and spreads this collet onto the bearing. Between, between the bearing and the spacer. So. Go just a little, there you go. Once she hits in like that, tighten that top screw. I believe that was five eighths. Nope. Hey, I'll be right here sooner or later. Now tighten this up. Got a notch out there for a 5 8 So when you have your collet expanded on the bottom now, as you can see, that's not going anywhere. Line this up. And then all you're doing is screw, screwing this down while you're holding the shaft in place with a 5 8 wrench and depending on how long they've been in there you know how much pressure you've got to use to get them out it usually takes a good five five to seven turns to get them out 
when it breaks free, you'll know. Okay. There is the bearing that came out. And to remove that, we just we're just gonna go backwards with it. We'll take our bolts off here and our washers. That certainly beats taking punches and hammers and everything else not to mention you know what you're doing to the inside of the of the sleeve and there is the bearing and that bearing has some play in it so I'm pretty confident at this point that that is what was making the noise when it was getting good and hot because I tend to ride at uh, high speeds sustained for a good period of time um, So that's the bearing that came out. We'll put that with the other bearing. Now inside is your spacer. Now I've already cleaned it. We'll drop it back in there. Then we're going to use our bearing install tool. I, think I have one open here somewhere. I'm going to use it. This is the bearing that's going to go back in there. Now with this bearing, you're reading the uh, in the manual where it says to put the side with the markings on it out. And the only flaw with that is that both sides of Harley Davidson's bearings have marking on them. So, but we're not really concerned about that on the front wheel because it's just a straight bearing, um, just a, a straight sleeve bearing that'll fall in. Now, on our install tool. You have a pilot and a guide. These are your pilots with your guide. And we're going to select the one that is appropriate to go see. There's no lateral movement in that. Just like that. And we're going to set that aside. Now the important thing here is to get a clean working surface. Because there's dirt that, that gets up in there. And microns and other things that just... Just get dirty over time. As long as we're doing it, we might as well do it the right way. Somebody told me once if you can't find time to do it right the first time, when we ever find time to do it right the second time. Now our bearing install tool is this. Nothing more than a long bolt with a uh, non-threaded shaft on it here. The threads start here. So, to put this on, we're going to tilt this up, put this through the bottom, and it will sit right in the receiver. Just perfect. Just like that. Now, we take our bearing, excuse me, our bearing with our pilot in it. This is our new bearing right here. We're going to put some grease around it. And use good quality grease. Um... Gonna put it around there because we want it to have a nice smooth ride going in. Put a thin film in there. Sit that on there just like that. I like to wiggle it around just a little bit just to get because the last thing you want is you don't want this bearing to go in cocked. If it goes in cocked, it can damage the uh, carrier on it. And we don't we don't want to damage the carrier. But if we do, I've got more bearings. Because if I'm not happy with the way something goes, I'll take it apart and go back to the right, right way to do it. Put our washer over there. 
bigger nut. Yeah, we'll take the right nut as soon as I can get it here. Okay. On this nut, you'll see there's a flat side here. It's not over here. It's in the machining process. We want the flat side to go against our washer. Nice and snug. I think we're going to need a recorder for the other side. This is 7 eighths. There you go. Okay. On the other side of the tire, you'll see where our pilot drift is here. That's nice and snug. And we're going to have to use a 11 16th or 3 quarters on this side to hold it. So, tilt this up. Let me make sure you all got a good picture of this. Eh, not a great picture. Let me move the camera up so. There you go. Okay. Now, using my 7 8 inch wrench on this side and my 3 quarter inch wrench on this side to hold it still, I'm going to slowly but deliberately just walk this in there. Now it's starting to get snug. I'm checking to make sure that the bearing is not cocked. Before I really get on to it here. Whoops. And you'll hit a point where it'll just slide right in real nice when it's already oozing the grease in. Whoops, it takes a little bit of force. Okay, because I lost y'all for a second, I unplugged it with my feet. So, anyway, we're just going to continue to pull this around. And I'll tell you, it takes, sometimes you got to really get on it. If you get a few of these, I would say get a bigger wrench. hit a certain point. Now you want to blind a pilot out. It's made just for that. No need to put a whole bunch of pressure on it. The pilot fits right in the recess. Built into the design process, I'm sure. And now, right here, we have properly installed a bearing and that bearing moves nice and smooth I could probably go just a just a tad tighter with that I got a just a tad bit of movement there because the idea is not to compress the bearings against the spacer the spacer is there to keep the bearings from, from uh, moving inward so I'm gonna slide it back through And, you know, there's no need to over torque these things. There's no need to go crazy with them. I mean, I've had people say, you know, I took my bike to the shop. Got this terrible noise in the front end. I said, okay, we'll take it off. And the bearing is almost literally uh, 
crust from where they beat it in with a hammer or a piece of driftwood. I've even found wood in between there. We just there you just you know just snug. But I, you know what I, was, I look at YouTube a lot and I saw some videos of uh, metric uh, people changing them and things. And, uh, I thought, man, there's none on here with with Harley Davidson. There you go. Okay, so we got bearings that move. That move nice and freely. And that's that. Wipe off your excess here. Now, of course, I'm going to clean the blue off the jar before I put it back on. I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Uh, after I do that, because uh, I don't know what you know what, what they did at the shop, things like that. But I always clean the brake rotors uh, with some um, some brake clean. And uh, of course, in there while I got it off, I've already sprayed the uh, the calipers real good with brake clean to clean that out. I drained the uh, drained to replace the uh, fluid about a month ago in those. But uh, that's about it. I'll. Uh, I guess I'll carry on with uh, putting this on a little bit. Let me get them cleaned up, and uh, I hope uh, I hope at least it's it's been a help to somebody out there going, oh man, you know front bearings here. Let me go pay the shop because I go to an Indy and he mount, mounted both tires for me, balanced them, uh, thirty dollars, got the tires off the internet, and uh, uh, so I've got maybe. In all the tires and everything, uh, one, two, fifty, probably two hundred and sixty dollars for uh, both front and rear tire. Uh, I like to stick with the engineered, designed. You know, the Harley Davidson, the 402. It's made specifically for Harley Davidson. Dunlop makes them specifically for them. As far as I know, there's not another. Uh, there's not another manufacturer out there that does anything uh, for that. So that's just me. If you want to buy buy another kind of tire, that's fine. Uh, some things to look at while I have your. Well, I have you, uh, your attention here. Tires, very important. I want you to look at this number right here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to kind of adjust my camera here so I can see what I'm trying to show you. Okay, that number right there, 1511. What that means is that this tire was manufactured in the 15th week of 2011. I had a uh, another tire up so I have a bad habit of buying things when they're on sale that I pulled out that I was going to put on last week and I noticed that it was made in the 26th week of 2004 so I got some pretty good knowledge of that front tire that was on there uh, any anything this is just this just me talking if it's five years or older and that includes in service time you don't want it uh, especially the way I ride you know I'm 80 miles an hour down the highway I do that for you know hundreds and hundreds of miles. Only stopping to get fuel in between. I'll hit uh, Sturgis, Lawson River Run this year, and I live in the southeast United States. I've already been down to Bike Week, went through the bottom half of Florida with some friends of mine. So uh, you know I don't want that fear that uh, a little bit of degraded uh, rubber or a flaw in the tire manufacturing system that would normally you know last uh, because of age gets degraded and doesn't. But that's me. But uh, you know, I always say, proper tire for the proper bike. I, you know, I'm a member of all those groups just like y'all are right there. I get on the internet and look up and they want to replace this wheel with that wheel. And can I go with a bigger tire? How big can I go with the tire? And this and that. Yeah, that all looks cool. But when you change the engineering design and you alter that, you know, who knows what could happen to you. But anyway, I'm done talking. Let me go ahead and uh, get this thing in place and uh, I'll start it back up when, uh, when I get to the uh, tire install. Well, I lied. I'm back here to show you something else. Marked on this rotor is the minimum thickness. And, and that's marked on there along with the, the OEM part number. Uh, a manufacturing symbol tells you that it goes on the left side. And this is a great time, although you can do it just about any time, uh, to go ahead and check that minimum thickness. Not that I would wait till it got to minimum, but my dials are sitting here right there so I'll slide her open here and zeroed out 
and I'm just walking around here a little bit just light pressure on it just to see what's going on and uh, pull it off and I'm sitting so the minimum thickness on this is uh, 0 0.80 I'm sitting at 5.19 so there is plenty of usable life in this thing and that's ironic because this is this is one of the original rotors and uh, let me check the other side here this will also give you an indication if uh, if your braking systems and things aren't uh, working right this one's sitting at 475 so, so this side over here was sitting at 475 and this one when I hold it tight is 482 so that, I mean you know things are going well okay I just wanted to point that out to you don't forget it's got the side stamped on it tells you it makes it in the part number what the minimum thickness is that's all part of your braking system there's a lot more to a wheel than just a tire before I put it back on, I'll look for cracks, stress cracks in this, you know, when I clean it up real good. And uh, that's it, because I only work for my bike about twice a year.